So Ryan Grimm cut this video out when he was in the press room, okay? And this is really, really f scary sh I mean, the American media is just straight up being like, why won't we do a no-fly zone? Like, why can't we do it? Can we do a little baby one? Can we do a little, like, tiny no-fly zone? Can we just get, like, a little bit, maybe with drones? And they cut this video out, and I was saying, like, dude, I love war i use that spongebob meme and then i said the media knows what no fly zones entail we enforced it with nato forces in libya in ukraine it would mean nuclear powers fighting i understand why ukraine wants it they're already living through world war three and the west said they'd have their backs but nuclear holocaust is not worth it i don't think nuclear holocaust is worth it i don't think the american government uh, which otherwise would be like beyond, crazy right. gung-ho believes nuclear holocaust is worth it and those mother love war so it's just strange when i see people that call themselves communists on the internet literally f taking a more reactionary and more aggressive escalatory stance than the american government the american it's government has like the blood of babies on its fucking hands and you call yourself a communist on the internet and you're like no actually f the american government would be a bunch of pussies right now clear that what they believe they need the most is more warplanes and fighter jets. So why is the U.S. assessing something different? In a White House press briefing, reporters repeatedly asked why President Biden isn't doing more to provide Ukraine with direct military support. Grand why does the U.S. believe they know better what Ukraine needs than what Ukrainian officials are saying they need the most? It sounds like, you know, we're pretty dug in on our position when it comes to the no-fly zone, when it comes to uh, the like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? You're going to die. Your children are going to die. Everyone is going to perish. There is no survival beyond the, the nuclear holocaust. What the fuck is wrong with these people, man? Absolutely psychopathic shit, dude. Remember all the people who were like, if all countries were led by women, we wouldn't have this kind of problem it's like yeah dude well there you go here's a here's a female press corps okay no they're still it doesn't matter you know maybe maybe it has something to do nothing with gender and and less to do with gender and more to do with uh american exceptionalism which transcends beyond gender you know what i mean and of course manufacturing consent the migs uh despite this growing call bipartisan call in congress to shift a little bit so, to put it bluntly is Zelensky wasting his time tomorrow asking for these things. The President Zelensky is going to be speaking to Congress tomorrow. He's been pushing for fighter jets, a no-fly zone. You have to hear some of those same requests tomorrow as well. Has the administration shift, thinking shifted on that at all? Julia, though, calling for a no-fly zone. They're a NATO <coughs> member. They share a border with Russia. How do we view their calls for a no-fly zone? Yeah. And on President Zelensky's address tomorrow, of course, he is expected to ask for more assistance, as my colleague noted. A lot of the U.S. positions on that haven't changed, as you just said, when it comes to the no-fly zone. But on the aircraft specifically, the Pentagon said last week that Secretary Austin said they do not support the transfer of additional fighter aircraft uh, at this time. Is that still the United States' subjects. position? Would a, a strike in Poland on supplies or, or anything, really, uh, automatically be met with a military or forceful? By the way, let me just describe something, okay? When your right friends now, have this now. approach when they're like, oh, I believe in I believe in implementing no-fly zones. When you have when you know people that say shit like that, it's because of these people. But worse, these people know what a no-fly zone entails and they're still pushing for it. That's fucking crazy, dude. You That's that insane. When you know what a no-fly zone entails, when you know what the consequences of that are, and yet you're still posturing for it, and also in the process misinformed the American public. That is literally just an abdication of journalistic responsibility. It's immoral. It's just disgusting Flat in every line. way, shape, and form. It, it is, you know, th these people aren't dumb. They know what a fucking no-fly zone is. The response is really a conversation amongst allies about how to respond. There are reports that a Russian drone made its way into uh, Polish airspace before going back to Ukraine and being shot down. Does a drone into Poland Count. <laughs> She's like, yo, I love when they're like, come on, just a little bit, like a little bit. Would you give us a little bit? Dude, can you just please escalate the nuclear posturing? Our ratings are doing fucking incredible right now, please. That's the funniest part about people accusing me of like being a fucking, uh, you know, war hawk or whatever, or saying that like, oh, Hassan has gotten such higher uh, view count because of this yeah. war. It's like, dog, I, but I don't want it. Like, I don't want the war. I'm, I'm happy with my, which by view 
view count is normalized again because people no longer give a shit. But like, I'm happy with this, you know? Your view count normalized because you wouldn't show war porn too, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the other part of it too. Can you give us any more details about what that threat means of severe consequences? The president obviously made the same threat last week. Is that purely economic consequences or would there potentially be a military threat? Go ahead. So, uh, aside from the request for weapons, President Zelensky has also requested that the U.S. be more involved hey, that's in our boy. toward a peaceful resolution to the war. What is the U.S. doing to push those negotiations forward? <clears throat> well, one of the steps we've taken, a significant one, is to be the largest provider of military and humanitarian and economic assistance in the world to put them in a greater position of strength as they go into these negotiations. We also engage and talk to the Ukrainians on a daily basis. And the president and this national security team has has uh, rallied the world in being... Ryan asked the only question that was like, what can we do to de-escalate? You've only talked about, you know, complying with Ukrainian uh, demands on escalation and about what kind of weapons we're sending there and yada, yada, yada. But what can we do with respect to de-escalation? What can we do? And uh, of course, she immediately sidesteps and deflects away. Unified She's like, oh, well, we're giving them guns, which is giving them an upper hand in the negotiations. Okay, but do you have any sort of interest in giving, uh, in, 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 you know, coverage. making concessions, well, asking for anything? Like, do you have an active uh, line open with uh, Ukrainian officials about the steps to take to potentially start the negotiations process or what concessions you think are good? Because, like, we're only currently giving guidance on the weapon side. Well, is it their place to say Ukraine is going to be hot headed towards Russia either way? Of course, it's their place to say, man. Even if it's not their place to say, they should still say it because they're still saying it. There's two things you can say in the situation. Hey, let's dial it back a step. Maybe it's time to fucking negotiate or Nah, fuck it. YOLO. You got this, boys. We're going to send you javies. OK, just fucking you know, crack those tank armors, baby. And America openly has said time and time again, no neg no negotiations at the barrel of a gun and no concessions made that are irreversible. Don't make concessions to Russia. The fuck are we doing? We're literally, as I've said over and over again, just simply ensuring the continuation of the war. So there's going to be a time when like even Zelensky might want to fucking uh, stop the war and make concessions. And I'm fearful that Americans are going to be like, nah, fuck that. Maybe Russians should take a step back first. The Ukrainians will lead and decide this process. Yeah, obviously that would be great, dude. I mean, honestly, of course, first and foremost, you know, what would be great. Yeah. If Russia stopped invading, thank you. Uh, I think we're in agreement there, except they're not going to. So what the fuck are you talking about? All wars end with negotiations, okay? All wars end with negotiations, treaties. That's just how wars end. Every moment that you're standing against negotiations or standing against, uh, uh, you know, peace good. talks, you are standing for the war. You're standing for the continuation and ongoing assault of Ukrainians. And for the record, to lift sanctions, the U.S. wants an irreversible Russian withdrawal from Ukraine. The if the war ends, Ukraine's independence, territorial integrity, China. and sovereignty are restored. Then sanctions could be lifted, but withdrawal must be in effect irreversible that Russia won't pick up and do exactly what it's doing in a year or two or three years. I mean, that's that's not bad. That's actually fine. That's I misunderstood. They can step back or Russian troops can have fun dodging the switchblade drones we are sending to Ukraine. Dude, that's not going to fucking purge the Russian forces, though. Like, do you not understand that, that you're just continuing it? Then, okay, cool. You're in America and you're horny and you're saying, oh, we're going to fucking send whatever switchblade drones or whatever the fuck, right? Okay, what's Russia going to do? Oh, all of a sudden, the Iskandar launch systems that they have staring down at fucking uh, Kiev from strike distance is going to start fucking dropping MLRS strikes or, or the thermobaric weapons you were talking about. Do you want that? Is that what you want? I don't know what a fucking switchblade drone is, by the way. What do you make of the claim that a no-fly zone effectively means World War III? Yes, me and the American government for once is we are completely in agreement. Me and the American government, which never, almost never happens, especially when it comes to foreign policy, are completely in agreement that a fucking no-fly zone would effectively mean nuclear holocaust, would mean World War III, because me and the American government both completely understand what a no-fly zone entails. It means it's the same as boots on the ground military warfare. Biden admin weighing in on providing Ukraine with killer drone calls uh, switchblades. The U.S. made guide missiles can accurately target tanks and artillery from miles away. Also known as a kamikaze drone. A deadly new kind of weapon on display. NBC News got an exclusive look at a so-called killer drone. 
Yeah, so it doesn't fire a missile. It the is the missile. This is about the size of a toy drone I bought. Bro, look at this. I mean, dude, we are so... Dude, we love... We love fucking... We love weapons, dude. We love our weapons, don't we, folks? Every day, the more Marat's... Uh, every day, Marat's statements about how, like, we make the Lamborghini of drones just uh, becomes more true. How is a no-fly zone the same as boots on the ground warfare? I genuinely don't understand. I, I'm assuming charitability here, charitability here. So I'm just gonna repeat it, uh, repeat this thing again. Okay. How do you say. think planes fly? Where do you think planes fly from? And what do you think planes are? A no-fly zone needs to be enforced, and it's enforced with missile systems. It's enforced with fighter jets. The enforcement of a no-fly zone implies that American fighter pilots flying American fighter jets are going to shoot down Russian fighter pilots and Russian fighter jets. It's exactly the same as boots on the ground military warfare. It's conventional war between two nuclear powers the only difference is that it's just not directly on the ground why the fuck is Zelensky calling for it then because he's desperate dude you're dying if you're dying you don't give a fuck if like the rest of the world joins your fight and it's a nuclear holocaust you're dying anyway it's already functionally nuclear holocaust for you that's how he thinks that's why they ask for it but the fact that like the american media are pushing for it is is, is psychotic Iranian-backed militias have used similar drones to attack American bases in Iraq and to target the Iraqi prime minister. The U.S. is definitely vulnerable to drone attack today. We need better defenses and we need them urgently for U.S. troops overseas. A new kind of weapon presenting a new kind of risk, both abroad and at home. Can Remember, it's good when we use them because we're using it against our enemies. But it's bad when our enemies use it against us because we're the good guys and they're the bad guys. Yeah, don't, how about don't make this shit, okay? How about that? Well, too late, we already did. I know I said this the other day, but the media really are acting like the military industrial complex salesman at this point, yes. Ryan Grimm is in the uh, press pool again today. Shouts out to Ryan Grimm. Uh, today, the White House press corps is continuing to ask why the US sending javelins, etc., but won't send fighter jets. Why are you holding back? Misaki continues to explain why they don't want to escalate. Misaki just noted she's answered the question on the planes about 167 times. Welker says, well, here's the 168th. Last question got heated. Pisaki tells a reporter urging the U.S. to send planes since it's also sending rifles that people should be able to understand the difference between fighter planes and pistols. Also, people don't understand. You can learn how to shoot a javelin missile, especially if you have a like unofficial. Because Americans don't know history, okay? In the in the uh, in the words of Felix Biedermann, Biedermann, Americans only know about World War II as far as history goes, and even when it comes to World War II, they don't even know World War II. That's it. So so many documented killings of Ukrainian civilians. Also, I think the latest number is 43 hospitals bombed. So, but I guess both sides. I'm not doing a both sides. It's like completely morally abhorrent to fucking... I literally just got done talking about what the fuck Putin is doing both in Ukraine, but also in Russia too. There is no both sides in this situation. Anyway, here is the 800 million assistance package that it, we're sending into Ukraine. 800 Stinger anti-aircraft systems, 2,000 Javelin, 1,000 light anti-armor weapons. I think the 1,000 light anti-armor weapons are the switchblade drones that we were talking about that we showed you earlier. The 6,000 AT-4 anti-armor systems, 100 tactical unmanned aerial systems 100 grenade launchers 5,000 rifles 1,000 pistols 400 machine guns and 400 shotguns over 20 million rounds of small arms ammunition and grenade launcher and mortar rounds 25,000 sets of body armor and 25,000 helmets in addition to weapons listed above previous United States assistance committed to Ukraine includes over 600 anti-aircraft uh, stinger er, anti-aircraft systems approximately 2,600 javelin anti-armor systems five mi-17 helicopters three patrol boats four counter artillery and counter unmanned aerial system tracking radars four counter Counter mortar stuff. radar systems. I mean, yada yada yada. Shotguns, machine guns, 40 million rounds, 70 high mobility, multi-purpose ve wheeled vehicles. This is why I say like Ukrainian sovereignty and Ukrainian wishes absolutely, completely rely on how much Americans and other NATO nations are willing to give to Ukraine. And even then, there is unfortunately a uh, expiration date on Ukraine's possible. Ukraine, I mean, I don't even know if they're ever going to be able to do this, but like Ukraine's possible liberation plus. from Russian involvement. Okay, you get it? I mean, this is this is like in some ways this is worse than Afghanistan. I don't know if we gave this much, uh, this many weapons to Afghanistan, and look what happened in Afghanistan. It's just it's just a straight up proxy war. By this logic, you could not arm any country under attack because it almost surely has Nazis in his army. First of all, if it were up to me, it'd be fucking awesome. Yes, 
demilitarize the entire planet. Use whatever reason you can to do that. So yes, I do agree with that. Okay. So yeah, good job on that take. Why did you think I would disagree with that? I love that. I'm anti-war across the board. Talking about which is giving rifles and pistols to Anyway, let's watch this White House press briefing for a little bit. to defend themselves. I think there's a difference that most people recognize. Thank you everyone so much. Have a nice day. Okay, never mind. We just ended it.